Hey everyone, I just wanted to tell everyone that's watching. If you are just starting out on Rolex Studio or you're a beginner, I suggest you go watch a few tools on GYs before starting out on this video. If you know a bit on GYs and know how to move and scale them, and you know the basics of Studio, we can begin. First off, open an empty base plate and we will begin. Make sure to get the model from the description, it's completely free to use and edit. If you find any bugs or issues, contact me on my Discord server, our developer. A link is on screen and in the description. With that being said, let's get started. Alright, so first off, we we'll go into view, open explorer, properties and toolbox. Inside of toolbox, we'll scroll down until you find my menu you want, unless you've installed already. The model is in the description if you want to go pick it up. Since it's been inserted, we'll go to the folder with this little arrow and we'll be messing around with V3 today. The other two versions, you can leave them, so we'll just delete them. Inside of V3, we'll open those, insert this into start GUI, insert this into workspace. Make sure you don't insert anything else, like if you insert this into workspace, don't do that. You need to insert this into workspace. Then customization, we'll drag this into workspace. Now, if you need some help, there's a help script right here, you can read through that. And that's all you should need if you go into any problems. Now, inside the menu, you can't really see it in game, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on the screen's UI, its properties, scroll down, and then find enabled, and then it should pop up. Now, if you don't want it like the way it looks, we'll start customizing the title screen first. What we're going to do is we're going to go to mainframe, go to buttons, and then you'll see these. Now people ask me for some customization options, like I don't want it to be dark grey. So I've added some extra colours, And if, but if you want dark grey back, just select all of these. Click delete, go to customization, and then go to one designs, go to dark grey, select all of these and drag them into buttons. A lot of things are the same, it's just a different colour. But if you want to make your own custom colour, we'll go inside one of the buttons. This is going to be the bottom, so we'll set like, you can set it's blue. And then we could set the top to light blue. Inside of content, we'll go to animations, and you'll just make it a brighter than what this is. So this is the bottom. We'll do a brighter version of the bottom, and then the top. We'll do a brighter version of the top. Now, if you want to add a different title, if you don't want this, we'll open the title, title frame, and then you have title. Just delete this, scroll up, and go to title designs. You can add an image if you really wanted to. So I could drag this in. Then, inside of properties, scroll down until you find image. Inside of image, put in the image ID. But if you want to use the text, we have a double title. If you want to put a text below the title, I'll show you what this looks like. So this is double title. You have a smaller text below a big text. So for the title, we could put like... Inside of text, we'll put sword fighting. And inside of title 2, we'll put like the version like version 0.01. That could be our version of the game. Now that we've customized our menu, we'll go over to loading sequence. Click on the frame, scroll down, and enable visible. This is the going to be our little loading sequence, so just before the player joins, they'll see this little screen right here. Now to start customizing this, we'll go into manager. This line right here, assets, this is going to be where the assets are going to be loading. By default, it'll be loading everything in workspace, so if you want to load specific assets inside of a folder, what we're going to do is we're going to go to replicate storage, insert a folder, and name it assets. Inside of this, we'll instead of doing workspace, we'll remove workspace and do game dot replicate storage dot assets. Now, if you want to load something, we need to put something inside of assets. So just for now, we'll put like a car or something, probably this. So we'll put this inside of assets, and then this will this will load the mesh. The mesh is just before it is shown in game, so it's basically a preloader. So if you want to add something to the background, we have some customization options for that as well. Go down to loading screen you can sequence inside of extras. We'll go up, and inside of loading screen extras, we're gonna add a texture like stripes. Extras, so we've got some stripes. Now I'll add some Viganelli. It's like a little dark border around. So then there's our loading screen done. So now we can click on loading sequence, scroll down, visible equals false. So now we can see inside the menu again. Now we get into editing pop-ups. So now inside the mainframe, go to pop-ups, open this frame, 
and then we can click on credits let's start with that first so inside credits scroll down go to position y 0.5 now if this is in the way for it for you what we'll do is we'll click on title click on buttons scroll up and put them inside of server storage now let's mess with our credits so i'm going to start off with this icon right here we'll go into content and then select the icon that you want to choose open this up and then we got icon script open up icon script and as you can see in this line 0000, zero, zero, zero. just change the zeros to your roblox set profile id so i'll put that as mine right now so i've got my id and i'll paste it into here now after that what we'll do is we'll close out of this and instead inside of credits go to info this is going to be some info on the place so we'll put like made this menu ui and we'll put probably like um scripting and player name i'll put my player name and then if you want to it's the same process with all the other ones but if you're a solo developer, just click on both of these and then delete. And if you didn't use the middle one, then you can just click on this and then drag it to the middle. And if you want to add more icons, if you have more than team three, we'll duplicate this and move it down. So you can you can add like six and add like a lower of three. So I can do that now. So we'll duplicate, just move it down. So this won't break anything since everything is inside of icon. So that's how you add for credits. Now we'll click on credits and set its position back to 0 0.50, 1.50. Now that we've messed with credits, we'll mess with some shop. Go to 0.5 as the position, and we got our position right here. Open up passes, scrolling frame, frame, and then you'll have this. So you can use a different sound like a game pass is. Basically a game pass is something like you buy it once, you keep it forever. But a, pro a product is something that you can buy continuously. It's like, that's what happens when you buy like cash in a game. Like you can buy 10 cash, 100 cash, and you can buy that as many times as you want. But you, with a game pass, you just have to buy it once. So let's some tutorials on um, game passes and developer products in the description if you want to read over those and don't know how to use them. And if you just want to use game passes, we'll remove the products and then we'll just scale passes using this little one here. Let's scale it about this size. And then it'll cover the middle instead of two sections. But I'm gonna keep products in for now. Now to edit this, we'll go into button, image text button, and then cell script. Inside of ID, instead of 0000, we'll put in the game pass ID. I don't have a game pass, so I'll just put that because I don't know what to put in. So now to change the game pass description, this is this. So the game pass could probably be like a golden sword, so we'll put like a golden sword. And then for the game pass name, we'll put like golden sword. And the game pass price can be 100 Robux. And then how do we do double products? It's the exact same process as doing game passes. Yeah, so you can do that by yourself, so you know what to do for next time. Now we can move shop back to its original position, 0.50 1.50. Now update log, I've made it a lot simpler to edit update log than the past versions, so this is pretty big, so as you can see, once you put this in, you'll see open the local script to edit, so keep that in mind at all times when you're editing this, that's why I put that there. So we're going to content editor, and the content amount is the amount of like updates that will show. Well, of content added to the update. So imagine like we got three new content added to the update. So first thing first, we'll do menu DUI. Now, because we put free content amount, everything else will be left out. It will just be this free right here. So we've done that to the update line. So we'll set this to 1.50. And then that should be everything for now. That should be the GUI. Now we'll move on to some of the other stuff. Now, you might be wondering when you insert this, what is this big box right here? This is basically where the player is going to be spawning. So the player will spawn inside this little box right here. And then when they press play, they will go over to the spawn point, which is right here. So start position is right here. How do we move it? Well, what you need to do is, as you can see, this one is a lot less transparent. Well, a lot more trans... Oh yeah. This is a lot less transparent than 
the other ones right here. So we'll go inside of the box because if you go, if you select it outside the box, it'll just drag one of the parts. We don't want that. Go inside and drag this part right here, and then you can drag all of the parts at once. So you can move this wherever you want in the map. So I'll put it like right next to the spawn so we can see the teleports. Now this part here, this is the camera. So like this is where the camera is going to be positioned when the player is on the menu. So we'll click on this. Open the arrow right here, and then we'll click on front. This is the front of the camera. Place the decal, so you probably see like this little box on on the um, part. This is where the camera is going to be headed. So this little box, the camera is headed in this direction. So I'll just drag it over here to our spawn. So what we'll do is we'll just position it. I'll rotate it. Now the front is facing this, so you can rotate it like this, sideways, like that. But I'm just gonna keep it like, what do you do like this? This should be good. And move back a little bit. This should be our camera positioning when we're in game. But it isn't like that exactly. This is just like showing you what it might look like. So just zoom in inside the part, and that is exactly where the camera's gonna be positioned. Now, if you want to change the spawn points, so like you don't want to spawn the player at this little spawn point right here. Instead, we want to spawn it like at different parts. So we'll put like a part here, put it like behind here, and we'll anchor it. So we need to name this. We'll name this like menu spawn part. Now we'll go back to buttons, so we can insert these two back into the main frame. Go to buttons, and then we'll go to play, content, button, play script. Now. Right here it is the spawn part, we need to change this. So game.workspace is spawn location. Instead of game.workspace that spawn location, we'll do game.workspace dot menu spawn parts. So then when the player clicks play, then it will spawn on this part right here. So just a note, if you put a spawn point down, they when they play, they will not spawn at the spawn location. They will spawn inside this box. They will not spawn on the spawn location. So next we're going to be adding some music. It's pretty simple, just this sound right here called music. We'll find like an audio for it. So you can go to audio, the music, or you have your own ID. So just insert your audio ID into this little sound right here. So click on it, go to properties, scroll down, and then put, put the ID in sound ID. I'm not going to put anything in there, so because I don't really have any music to put in there, so that should be it. Now, once we're done, we're going to click on the screen GUI of the menu and go to enable and say to false. So now you can edit with everything else without interfering with the menu GUI. Now we'll place this in game, we've got the loading screen. This seems to be working, it's loading all the parts. There we go, sword fighting. So we'll do like update log. Let's check this out. So the update log shows free, like we were going to label. It doesn't show 10 because 10 is the maximum at the moment. I'll add some more soon so that's that and credits our credit works make this one usually like spitting and you probably fill in the other two so they should work for you now shop got our game passes the golden sword and we have our settings just a small list of settings that might be useful shadows reflections diffuse an fov 120 so our fov here Then we should click play, and we're, then we are in the game. Now, here's another feature that some of you might want. So what we do is, we're gonna go down here, and we'll have a back to button menu. This is a quite requested feature for me to add. So, this is now in the menu GYs. So you can click on this little load script, and then disable the enabled script. And then it should show up. Now inside of our game, we'll just click play, and then we are we have our back to menu button. We'll click that, takes us back to the menu and takes us back to the part. Click on play. We'll say it'll set us back to this little spawn part. Now, if you encounter any bugs, make sure to comment it down below or join the Discord server in the description and report it to me. And that should be it for now. If I find any bugs or add any updates, I'll release a follow-up video that will probably be linked in the description if that's out. So.
I'll see you in the next video. Bye.